the Joe Rogan experience. Um, how much did you pay attention to McKenna's theory uh, about uh, the evolution of the human brain, of uh, the stoned ape theory? That Yeah, I looked at it, um, but I, I found – I didn't find it persuasive. And in fact, if you – Press Terence McKenna. He didn't find it entirely persuasive. It's a very, it's an interesting speculation. It's kind mm. of a mind game. I don't see how I can see how uh, psychedelics would influence the mind and 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 create new ideas, new memes, um, and might contribute to language. Um, but how does it get into the genes? That's what I, I, I the genes I, the how, genes because he said it changed us at the genetic level. Mm. I see psychedelics as having had a profound effect at the level of cultural evolution, that there are lots of interesting innovations that people who had psychedelic experience introduced to our culture. We talked about religion sure. earlier. That could be one. Uh, I had a wonderful interview with Stuart Brand, the founder of the Whole Earth Catalog, and his insight, he had this profound insight um, during a, a psychedelic trip on the roof of his house in North Beach, and he saw the curvature of the earth in a way he hadn't before. And he said, God, if we could have a photo, this is 1966, uh, we had never seen a picture of the earth from space yet. And he said, if we had a picture of the earth from space and we could see it as this round spaceship, that would change everything. Because if you think of the earth as flat, as most of us instinctively do, it's endless. There's endless resources. Uh, you don't have to worry about limits in any way. But if we had that image and you realize, we, I have to start a campaign to get NASA to turn the cameras around. They're on their way to the moon. Show us the Earth from space. Wow. And he said, I, I, I'm going to make a campaign. I know. And he's, you know, this is on LSD. I'll make a button. Very important medium in 1966. I'll make a button. And what should the button say? It should be a little paranoid to get people's attention. Why haven't they shown us an image of the Earth from space? Yeah, that's what he would do. And he started a campaign. He started selling these buttons. And the campaign got in the newspapers, and it goes viral, as, you know, as viral as you could get in 1966. And two years later, NASA produced that image, and he put it on the whole Earth catalog, and that image galvanized the environmental movement. So it's those kind of memes that psychedelics introduces into culture, and that changes mm. culture. That, right. that image changed culture. Um, and I think there are hundreds of them. I mean, Steve Jobs talked about, you know, his use of LSD is very important to his uh, formative experience. And in fact, there's a whole tradition of computer engineers going back to the 50s using LSD that I, I wrote about in the book. So, but I don't see how we were selected genetically because of there, there was an advantage to the people who were taking a lot of psychedelics. Um, that's where he loses me. I don't think that's necessarily me. his uh, Maybe I'm theory. misrepresenting it. His theory is that it coincides with climate change and these uh, lower hominids experiencing, uh, experimenting with different food sources. So as the uh, rainforest receded into grasslands, right, right. they started uh, experimenting by flipping over cow patties and finding grubs and, and perhaps even mushrooms that were growing on these cow patties. And his theory was that there's a bunch of different benefits. One, low doses of psilocybin have been shown to increase visual acuity. Which and it's given a, to hunting dogs yes. in certain cultures. Yes. Yeah. Make you a better hunter, make you right. more in tune with what you're doing, um, that it would make you more, it would, uh, central nervous system arousal, including sexual arousal, right. make you more horny, which would make you, you more know, productive, procreate right. more often. And that the the very unusual effect that psilocybin has on the mind could have led to language and could have also led to the expansion of neurons. The well, language the could human be brain, part of cultural evolution. Sure. Yeah. The doubling of the human brain size, though, was a, yeah. the, the particular thing that yeah. it coincided, according to McKenna, it's been, there's a lot of people that disagree with him. But his brother makes a very compelling case for Dennis. him. His brother, Dennis, who's still alive. Yeah. Oh, and he's a brilliant, brilliant guy. Yeah. He, he talked about it on this podcast. He talked about his take on the stoned, er, er, uh, stoned ape theory scientifically, why he believes it's, it's w really what happened, but that it does coincide with the change in climate of yeah. these, uh, these, you know, ape-like people trying out different things. And that the doubling of the human brain size over a period of two million years is like one of the greatest mysteries in the entire fossil yeah, record. Yeah, but there are alternate theories. I mean, Much, I wrote about I one of my last books. 
all coincide. They may be. Cooking with fire yes. can explain the increase sure. in the brain size because you get more nutritional value from cooked food the than raw The throwing arm, uh, the, yeah. the, 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 uh, the desire to hunt all these different animals and the calculating all these different ways to do that and communication. Right. I think there's probably yeah. a, a bunch of coinciding factors. Yeah, and it may well be that, that uh, people were eating everything, right? Our ancestors, it's amazing what they ate. And, uh, and no doubt they ate psychedelic mushrooms and no doubt. I mean, he also believed that language was a form of synesthesia, you know, in the mm -hmm. way that synesthesia, you can smell a musical note or something like yeah. that, that you're taking a, a sound, a meaningless sound, uh, you know, um, and, and you're attaching it to a concept that maybe that happened on uh, psilocybin. But well, he had a bunch of ideas that never panned out. He Ridiculous was, you know, ideas. he was, look, he was, he was incredibly high creative person. And, he, yeah. and, uh, and, and they're all, you know, really interesting yes. to think about. Some of them, I think you can probably discredit based on what we understand about genes and evolution, but others are just really provocative. Well, that's where his brother comes in. Yeah. His, his brother's a strict scientist. scientist. Yeah. Strict scientist. Right. He, doesn't, he doesn't tolerate any of the woo-woo. And, he goes and, he straight has, to, and he's skeptical of some yes. of his brother's ideas, too. Oh, yeah, too. openly. Yeah. 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 I mean, loved his brother, but he was like, oh, he's had a yeah. lot of things that weren't really accurate. But uh, also, Terrence McKenna, too, would say, well, you know, yeah. I'm just putting these ideas out there. Well, he, the guy was a, a constant pot user. He was constantly doing psychedelics. And Brilliant yeah, talker. Brilliant I mean, talker. he would have a podcast now, right? Oh, for it sure. It would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'd promote the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I would too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was a fun guy to listen to talk. And uh, there's, a, wh there's a podcast called The Psychedelic Salon that my friend Lorenzo hosts that has pretty much every Terrence McKenna lecture and speech he's ever done available for free. You can download it. And Lorenzo has taken these and digitally remastered them so the sound is better. And it's really awesome that, that, that he's got this resource. But the, the idea that these uh, lower hominids experienced, ancient hominids experienced, experimented rather with psilocybin, and this was what advanced culture or advanced language advanced their understanding of each other it's a very very compelling idea yeah it is and i i think i mean the way i think about drugs like psychedelics in evolution in the same way like in genetic evolution radiation causes mutations and some of those mutations turn out to be really valuable you know purely by accident some great new trait is introduced to the species and it increases fitness and that person or that individual lives on in the cultural realm, psychedelics are like radiation. They're mutagens. They create change, variation, and that advances cultural evolution. Um, all that variation, all those wild ideas, 99% of them are stupid and useless, I'll bet. But that 1% <laughs> can change the world. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>